Wide of Noon, World Health Day, that is April 7th, 2021. This year's uh, motto or the slogan of World um, Health Day is building a fairer and healthier world for everyone. Uh, having said that, Ayurveda has a very unique concept of what is health. And uh, let us start with its slogan, Samadosha Samagvishya Samadhatu Malakriya. So I would like to go to Dr. Somit. So what is that Samadosha Samadhi Samadhatu Malakriya? For the uh, name and how do we understand are we in that category of Sama or Ikhidu? So when you talk about uh, an ideal state of health, um, there are certain uh, parameters which uh, Ayurvedic classical texts have put forth to understand, am I healthy? Uh, so in that, the physical uh, health is first the primar, primary uh, categorization or characteristic which we look for. So Ayurveda has put forth certain symptoms. For example, if you feel... Uh, a pain in abdomen or bloatedness in abdomen. This itself is a discomfort, though it may not be a disease, but it's still a discomfort. So even a discomfort is categorized in Ayurveda as a state of ill health. It may not be a disease, but an ill health. So if you look at a holistic perspective of understanding of health in Ayurveda, it has to be absence of even any discomfort, whether it is physical, which is we try to understand from the dosha, different vidhi and chaya lakshanas we tell in Ayurveda. So we have a set of questionnaire which we attend, attempt to or a clinician ask for. Malakriya, this is very unique thing and very interesting. So we know that there are three primary malas. Is uh, First is uh, mutra, that is urine, purisha, that is feces, and swed or sweda. In fact, very interestingly, in classical text, it has not been quantified, but in a, a, a Chema Kautu Hala, which is a 16th century book, it has given us a thumb rule that if you pass two times motion or you go to the toilet two times, six times urine, it's said to be as quantified as a, 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 a number of normal evacuations. Mm -hmm. So this gives us to quantify it. So what number of times I should go to the toilet every day or urine every day uh, if we are not diabetic or with so these are some parameters in Ayurvedic text which is very interesting to go through. So of course this is uh, in terms of uh, dhatu if you talk about that is tissue. So we look for various tissues and their functions have been elaborately dealt Ayurvedic text and we look for whether that tissue uh, related physical abnormality is there or not. It can be through physical examination. It can be these days we say there is expansion of Pratyaksha through Anumana through instrumentation. We can do a lot of Anumana into Pratyaksha we say. So this we come to know from various tests or physical examination to ascertain whether you are in a state of Samadha. Uh, the next line says uh, prasanna atma indriya mana. So, how important is that prasanna term of atma indriya mana? But clinically, how do you find that? When do you say the patient is okay? Fine. Uh, now, okay, not to have medicine. How do you uh, identify that?
positive aspects which we see as a report for the end of the end of the whether it is an advanced diagnostic method or just markers or indicators which uh, probably even in Ayurveda also we had this concept but only thing is the difference is the equipments were not that uh, advanced. What we had in the time of Ayurveda was more of a, a person to person understanding. Now uh, the person to person understanding it is a little uh, difficult to have a standardized uh, aspect. So we have something called the intermediary we have machines now. Wherein we have set standards, for example, we understand uh, certain values, for example, hemoglobin. There is a range at which hemoglobin is said to be healthy. And this range is uh, very much uh, depends on, on the age, uh, the sex of the person, uh, the condition in which the person is. The, even uh, many of these uh, ranges are uh, geographically varying also. So all these aspects, even if there is a lot of automation now into diagnostics, probably you might have read uh, uh, in every report it says uh, it, it ends that it has to corroborate with the clinical presentation, uh, even if uh, it is there. So these are these are all markers, even now or even earlier also, of course, uh, there was other aspects wherein uh, we look into the diagnosis of the Vita Parishal or an idea. So now, instead of that, one-on-one, -on -one, we have an intermediate, we, we have some machines, we have standard values. That is the difference. Beyond all this, as Ayurveda says, even now, World Health Organization also defines health and uh, uh, tripod is a tripod is a uh, the physical well-being, of course, uh, that is uh, one of the most important aspects and probably that is something which has been taken care of uh, a little uh, uh, proactively. And uh, uh, right now, everybody is realizing that it's not just enough. Uh, we have uh, the uh, uh, mental well-being also, which is there. And of course, this COVID uh, situation has brought out the importance of that. And uh, uh, when we consider the mental well-being, it's also important, the social well-being. Of course, at this time, when we are limited to ourselves to uh, especially during the lockdown, the social well-being is a part. Of the importance of all this has been now been understood in much greater aspects. So coming to your question, yes, these diagnostic aspects and these tools are important. But beyond that, still the paradigms of health remain the same then or even now. So I just wanted to add uh, what he was talking about is when you're talking about a range of a uh, particular a value or a particular test. So it is understood that is a range. It's not a single number. It's a median value. So that keeps on changing based on even country. For example, we've been seeing vitamin D the, or a thyroid uh, levels. It differs from different country to country and even climate to climate. So we see Ayurveda talks about health in the perspective of Rushyam, Desham, Balam, Kalam, Analam, Prakriti. So all these factors are certain contributing or influencers and in a kind of you know very modern genetics terms we are telling about is epigenetic environmental factors or other factors which can impact the expression of your experience of health. So ultimately when you talk about uh, for example one very uh, unique thing which we see on our uh, kind of in you know, OPD, especially a menopausal woman, for example. Um, we see slowly her cholesterol levels keeps going higher, even by a normal menopause itself. Now, should we attempt to reduce that normal raise in cholesterol level? Because we know that after you menopause, your normal estrogenic cycle uh, stops being active and cholesterol becomes the source for uh, a estrogenic uh, surge which keeps them away from or protects them from a menopausal symptoms. So as practitioners, we have to be very clear that uh, even when we utilize these modern parameters, you have to be very specific to the context which we are addressing. To. So Dr. Priya, if you have some... Cholesterol, we are also seeing with different drugs. For people who are sedentary, they may need less Using the same kind of medication, the same range of uh, values, it has 
So I, if you look at the change scenario in the event of a pandemic, what we are facing right now, where, of course, our mobility has been restricted, mm -hmm. definitely. But uh, what we'll have to understand is sticking to the basic principles of the Nacharya and Jajya is very important. Of course, going to office doesn't mean that you are doing a lot of physical activity. Rather, you may have I less physical. Yes. Yeah. So, one of the cornerstone of whatever the situation, there is a pandemic or no pandemic, we have to stick to our Dinacharya, which is in alignment with the circadian rhythm principles. That means you have to properly fix a time of your sleep. This is very important. It's, as we all have understood that, see, health, these all goals of health we are discussing comes when you follow the Trayopastamba. That means Nidra, Ahara and Abramachara. If your diet and lifestyle are properly managed, then you can achieve these goals. So, very important message what we will have to understand is that whether we work from home or we go to office, stick to a proper schedule. So, try getting up before sunrise. Do your yoga or your exercise, whatever you do, before the stress hormone surges. So generally, the time where we say kapha time is the time where all your stress hormones are surging according to modern uh, uh, circadian rhythm principle. So you have to see that before this surge happens, you have to do something which will be acting as a preventive measure. So that's why Surya Namaskara was at the time of sunrise, not at the 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock based on our community. So first, we have to program our life. Second thing is, important is what to eat and when to eat according to your digestion metabolism. So, Kham rule was always heavier food in the presence of sun, up to afternoon, have heavier middle of the day and very light dinner in the evening. So, these are basic Kham rules if we are able to follow and align it with the concept of eating local and seasonal. So, always one mantra is eat Something when it is cheap for you to get in the market. Why? Because that is the season where it is good. So if this is followed, which we have been slowly digressing because of the culture of, you know, all these malls coming up where we have multi-brand stores, we get lost into that materialistic urge and we lose. And in fact, one way economically, it is very important. You know, this was the economic model of India as such, where local small farmers, small uh, vendors, they also survived because of these kind of local practices, which we should preserve. And in fact, rather I say pandemic has taught us a lot. When all these multi-brand chain failed, what supported the local demand and need of people was local availability of food. And we can survive. So this pandemic has taught us that we can survive based on and rather we live uh, I'm not being uh, cynical about it but I'm, I'm thinking is, is we lived without extravagances which we had and with minimum um, mobility with minimum resources we lived. But yes of course there are other challenges of course stress other factors which we'll have to really address too. Uh, sir one aspect is uh, like uh, I think people like me who are outside from Ayurveda, that is something 
what does actually brahmacharya mean in context of health yes so i think again chema kautala i will quote so it is always uh, when you say brahmacharya is always uh, kind of you know uh, sometimes seen in terms of how your sexual life should be planned according so in fact the chema kautala has also rationalized it see let us realize that we live in a materialistic world and we have our physical desires and needs so this particular book has very very uh, openly and very clearly explained about that what should be given indulgence in our sexual intercourse according to seasons because again i told you your daily lifestyle should be uh, aligned with the seasonal uh, cycle also so like in see in uh, Uh, our uh, astrology you have a a planetary position based on a kind of you know a bigger cycle and a smaller cycle also happens so different horas you say like you know similarly you are living and trying to live in unison with the universe with a diurnal cycle that is sunset and sunrise at the same time an annual cycle that is the movement of earth around the sun now what tells about is basically so if you are living in a spiritual or want to live a spiritual life then you have to abstain from all sorts of uh, sexual intercourse in, in that even chintana or thinking about sex is also a brahmacharya or talking about sex is itself a brahmacharya so if you are not looking at ideal form of spiritual life if you want to still be a material world which is not sin in fact all of most of us live in material world but then there should be a specific rules so they have talked about in the moderate season which is kind of a spring or uh, it is autumn they are moderate seasons your frequency of intercourse can be three times a week if you are in a winter season as as frequent as you want or in summer which is uh, like you know this summer and varsha ritu or rainy season are said to be as where your bala when you talk about bala it's not only physical strength but also your immunological or you know how your endocrinological function supports the process of uh, reproduction or those uh, thing tend to be low in summer and um, you know uh, this rainy season so they have said that try to uh, avoid as much as possible or at least uh, maximum if you want once in fortnight they are told so they have quantified so i was quite a uh, kind of astonished to see that they that our ancient acharyas also had this view of quantifying things like as i uh, we see in the modern science they objectively try to understand that what should be the number now this cannot be the only and so there can be another views also but what i am trying to share you what is textually uh, have has a a uh, reference and shame to to realize a uh, kind of a most more recent text but basically there's a text based on ayurvedic dietetics where lifestyle is being talked about so diet and lifestyle should align and the best part is the whole circadian genomics what we are talking about which got the nobel prize in 2017 also talks about same thing your central clock or your peripheral clock which is organ depends on what time you wake up and you sleep and what time you eat and what you need and how you lead your life so in short what i'm saying is in ayurveda we never thought about uh, only a spiritual life where uh, abstinent to sex is the uh, uh, abramacharya indulgence in sex according to shastric norms is also a type of abramacharya where you are not in fact uh somehow stressing your whole dhatu parinama and you go according to the rules of the uh, dvicharya and dvicharya so that sums up the uh, basics that are told in uh, ayurveda about the health and we cannot uh, end the conversation without having a talk on covid definitely so sir i would like to know what are the new variants that we should be talking about how serious is it or is it you know uh, dangerous that we be see with covid there are uh, three aspects when we need to think when we need to talk about the second wave mm-hmm. uh, one us uh, one aspect us uh, yeah most of them are how informed what it is and 
uh, most of us know, uh, like even the layman know, what is the seriousness of that. That is one aspect. The second one is, uh, when you speak about the variants, uh, right now, uh, the drum card, uh, our health sector has uh, kept to deal with the living vaccines. So how, how effectively these vaccines deal with these variants is one question which needs to be answered. And uh, of course, most of them, there are researchers on that also happening on one aspect. The uh, third part of it is uh, uh, actually variants which is reported are not virulent variants. It is not virulence that makes it more uh, troublesome. What it makes uh, problematic uh, is that the rate of transmission is actually increasing. So again, that brings more stress to our healthcare system. Uh, one main aspect when you look from preventive aspect is that uh, we should not have apathy. The general public should not have that feeling that, okay, this is happening for quite a one year and nothing that serious as that would be really uh, dangerous. So I think this is the aspect where even Ayurveda plays quite an important role. So having said that, uh, there is something, a uh, very new understanding in COVID that has come up as the radiological COVID, wherein RT-PCR is negative, but the patient might have all the symptoms of COVID-19. So sir, what is the understanding of radiological COVID? Is it very similar to COVID or what? what is that we should be uh, talking about? What is that we should understand in radiological COVID? Yeah, see, what happens is, let's uh, understand the fact is uh, uh, only 4% of patients who are infected gets into a severe form of disease. So, based on our experiences, uh, when we are screening COVID patients, uh, what we have seen is that people may be symptomatic to COVID-related like symptoms mm -hmm. some 10 days back or two weeks back. And the, by the time they come to a hospital and gets hospitalized because of the symptom of breathlessness or uh, uh, complications, maybe early ARDS or uh, in ARDS form, acute respiratory distress when it happens. So you go and check the patient. Uh, from CT, it shows a very mild to, uh, sorry, moderate to severe disease form. Corat scores will be there. And when you check an RT-PCR, it will be negative because by that time, the replication of virus in upper respiratory tract is almost over. So you may be negative to uh, nasopharyngeal swab, but that doesn't mean that the virus is not active in your lungs. It is already active in your lungs and has created a acute respiratory distress syndrome. This has been, I see, uh, in our uh, research project which we are involved in, we are seeing, uh, it's quite, uh, like, it's been very high, but almost uh, maybe one in 10 cases we are seeing that they may be negative to uh, RT-PCR, but then uh, they have all the uh, symptoms of COVID and they are managed as per COVID protocol and they recover. So, what is important to understand from this is that, see, 80% of people will recover from COVID because of their innate immunity or their immunological response. But then out of these 20, there are certain category of patients which will get into a severe form of disease. So only one important message is that, that please don't take, if you are a high risk or even if you're not a high risk group, please don't take the symptoms easy. Address these issues as soon as it happens with your medical care provider. It can be of your choice. Assess what type or what stage you are into and go for a particular, uh, more, uh, some medical care. Because what happens is, this is the biggest disservice to society that you just keep quiet, you try to manage on your own, and you keep on also spreading it around. And that is what we have seen is many patient who comes with radiological COVID has taken their symptoms very easy, and they land up into getting into a severe form of disease. And so it's very important that do not ignore any symptoms. 
it may be a flu it's fine but please get it checked because this is only the way we we can stop the whole chain and second wave seems to be much faster because a lot of people have been transmitting with milder symptoms and people who are at high risk get the severe form of disease though yes vaccination will help us and is rather maybe helping us that we are not getting uh, still the death rate is not very high but it's all question to see how this whole pandemic pans out but one important thing which i have to say is the whole concept of this samadosha the spiritual physical and psychological well being we have seen that covid is not just a infectious disease which affects because of a virus you have a physical Uh, ill health but as a repercussion of the whole trauma you undergo in handling this disease we get lot of issues with post traumatic stress disorders we they get lot of neuropsychiatric issues i think maybe we'll have to also discuss about those issues because it's very important because many of us address our physical symptoms by taking medicine by getting a good hospital health care but not of us who have like you know we have been seeing that people who have recovered from uh, covid even they are not realizing that they are suffering from such kind of mental illness because their bystanders complain that now he has become very aggressive rather he has become very confused or he has become very anxious these are symptoms which gets ignored rather we'll have to help them more holistically so this is one challenge as healthcare provider which you have to talk about make people aware of what are the symptoms which are though not physical but yet connected to what we have undergone yeah what you see depression also it's a depression is a very common thing that has come we can uh Right, like because post-COVID complications are one. Work from home is another. A lot of eating and all those things is another. So do you see depression as one major challenge we face these days? Yeah, we are seeing both cases. I think some families, because of lockdown, they all are at home, so they are happy. So their work stress is less because they are not going to office. So in bank sector, they are happy, so that they are happy, mm-hmm. and they want to work at home rather than going to office. So we have that kind of people also. and we have also people who are stressed because of being at home they are not able to go outside at all so we have both categories and more than all that the fear of this disease has caused lot of uh, psychological health problems because in the first part of the lockdown nobody knew what is going to happen in the whole condition so because of all that many people had a problem of uh, like anxiety how to take care of their health and that kind of confusion also was now this is clear because of the fear after the vaccination and this so we have not had that but during the lockdown we had both kinds of situation what is that about to advise us that we would like to do is to have a picture of the vaccination and the, during the lockdown and the second wave is coming up what is on world health day especially what is what would be the two advices you would like to give them on the psychological basis you know, i would uh, rather mm-hmm. discussing um, with the family mm-hmm. having more family time and there is going to be a lockdown in the first part we did not realize what is going to happen and how long the lockdown has to be now that we have understood about more things about covid it will be very good especially for elderly people to take care of them and uh, also the whole family to be helpful and as you said you know to understand the symptoms very early and to take care of them that will be the best so so what i'll be adding to it like you see if you look at even uh, uh, research on again i'll again bring you back to the whole research on chrono biology see uh, what is the situation in family like she talked about two paradigms one in where people are happy being together where their interpersonal relationship they manage to well that is a boom in fact and rather we come to know about you know oh i never knew him so well now we are interacting so that is one part of it. other part was 
those people who did not work on their interpersonal relationship need be also rather because we are in a nucleated family right now so in fact this situation this the way we interact with our spouse the way we interact with our kids has posed a lot of challenge because kids are never used to having parents so much always to look at or uh, parents also didn't have kids to look after them because they used to do so or i think it's a challenge and it is also a challenge on our own so it's a very important thing that we should train people and teach people how to manage uh, expectations of family members and how to build the uh, ideal family environment because now you will say why why the hell we should worry about uh, how our family environment is about but the research says that it has a strong impact on your central circadian clock or which regulates many of these hormones so if you are not able to manage those situations well it is going to get you into a stressful situation which will from even from the physical level with percolate to mind or from mind to physical the psychosomatic illnesses are increasing because we have never been you know trained where uh, we are going to even interact with such people so long first second thing is which very important is social skills see till now we lived like for in a, we live in an apartment suppose so most of us now live in a community or a park there are so many points where this conflicts management happens or how you make friends or others uh, accept you as a friend is also very important again this is part of our social well being so i think these two things has a it, they are soft skills but then it has also a strong impact on our neuro psychiatric or neuro psychiatric and endocrine skill you need to work on this and i think uh, covid even we don't get infected with the virus and leading to a lot of post traumatic stress disorders or other psychiatric issues which does happen as a sequel of covid but even if we are not affected we are undergoing such challenges so i think there is a very important part where yoga or exercises or whatever any form of physical and uh, uh, kind of you know uh, psychological cognitive uh, uh, activities need to be involved and then we need to look into in a long term and especially software industry is facing a big problem because still they are working from it i think other uh, industry they are of course going to their workplace and doing something but still there are affluent people who are still like you know so called affluent what we say they face this challenge so i think um, we have uh, onus on us as physician that how do we balance both this together by uh, addressing both psychological spiritual and physical uh, health this year through the clear and clear Uh, this is very interesting fairer and healthier uh, fairer uh, probably the concept of uh, having the same standards of health care for the rich and the poor the rich countries and the poor countries uh, this is what uh, the uh, world health day is uh, forcing this other dimension to it also for example uh, ayurveda medical system which has a lot of studies are coming out that it is uh, capable of dealing with a condition like covid but we still feel it's unfair not to allow ayurvedic physicians to treat a condition like covid in a ayurvedic hospital so probably let this maxim of between fairer health gives the right perspective to the policy makers 
wherein uh, the right medical system, access to the right medical system. It's, uh, I feel it's the denial of a fundamental right of a patient to access the right medical system. So I hope uh, this year will mark as a revolutionary time. Of course, uh, we are all being dragged into such a uh, situation now uh, because of COVID and uh, uh, hope the policymakers will become fairer and build a healthier world. Yeah, so I think, see, this error, uh, I, see, uh, I think it was a revelation for the whole Ayurveda community uh, at large, that we always thought about that our core area of strength is non-communicative. Mm -hmm. But probably COVID was one occasion or a, one opportunity for the whole Ayurveda community as such, where I think government, non-government organization, everybody came up. And I think most number of people trials were registered from Ayurveda and other Ayu system of medicines in such a short span in CTRI for the first time in history. Now, what I see is uh, that if such a enthusiasm and such a, a, a I think uh, also a scientific acumen is shown by Ayurvedic community. That means there is definitely certain um, advantages of it. So I think uh, where Sujit is coming from, I understand. And I would like to very clearly talk about this. See, we'll have to be very clear what we can do, what we cannot do. So, we, so Ayurveda or Ayush system medicine has its own uh, advantages as well as limitations. So let us understand and build up proper body of evidence where and we are very happy that Ayush has come out with proper guidelines for mild cases of course this is, so there's no doubt that a mild case of COVID with no, not having any high risks like diabetes, cardiovascular disease I think all our colleagues have been uh, treating uh, well uh, even though they, they they may not speak out in public that even public is embracing. See, I always say that numbers, like in Kerala, you will see right now, they have almost the second highest number of patients who are uh, kind of, you know, number of infected people. But, you know, death rate, it is the lowest, one of the lowest death rate. Now, reality is not that only that uh, Kerala has a very advanced uh, kind of, you know, uh, health uh, care network, but also they have these traditional way of living, which has protected them from getting into. Though officially, uh, Ayurveda is not, you, uh, you know, utilized as official way of uh, treatment of even uh, severe COVID or mild COVID or what. But people at large has accepted it and been doing. It. And this data is a reflection of that something is going on. Which is not done anymore. Knowing you or unknowing. Unknowing. So, 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 and second thing is, people all talk about like, you know, why uh, India or Southeast Asia have low mortality. See, again, let us understand that uh, most of these uh, advanced discussion, what we're talking of, molecular uh, mechanism of COVID, uh, uh, how it is impacting your system, innate immunity, and improving the, uh, your kind of innate immune response. Somehow, we find out some or the other herbs has been always part of our daily diet and lifestyle. So, it is a boon as well as a bane. It's also a disadvantage. Why? Because we have large number of uh, mild cases of COVID because of our maybe diet and lifestyle. You understand? Know, it may be. The issue is the high risk patient. The only what we as a society will have to be very clear is and as doctors we will have to tell this that if you are a high risk patient we should not take. We should the moment we feel that there are some symptoms we should address it by a proper uh, kind of you know testing or by proper evaluation by a good uh, health practitioner and then take a very rationalistic decision. And from our own experiences for last one year, all our team, we all are working 
in Ayurveda for managing such condition and rather we are only addressing only high risk patients. So we are only uh, addressing diabetics, hypertensive, uh, obese patients who are at uh, high risk patients we are managing with an integrative approach. So what we need to definitely share that uh, an integrative approach does have an advantage. So uh, an advantage not only in terms of managing symptoms of COVID or getting out of uh, uh, the uh, kind of in hospitals early or avoiding the complication of COVID, but also when you interact with physicians with a holistic understanding, you also take care at the same time of your mental and spiritual well. Why? Because, and as per Ayurveda, uh, the, the pure Mahabhuta or Mahabhuta also affects your thoughts and emotions. Because ultimately, each uh, Mahabhuta is addressed or connected to a Tanmatra, which is not a, um, a matter, but an experience. So, I think probably Ayurveda is gifted with a unique thought process where matter affects the subtle uh, mind and mind affects the matter in a very uh, theoretically uh, coherent way. So World Health Day April 7, 2021. Fair and healthier uh, world to everybody. So stay safe, stay home. We are all there for any ailment or anything. So any concerns in our health, please do visit us and we are here to help you. Thank you so much.